everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Social Divas, where we will be discussing like another like different like either kidnapping case or murder case that happened throughout the years, and this case that I will be talking about happened a long a uh, a while ago in the year nineteen eighty four. So this case is actually called the the Curry murder case, because basically is the murderer who this person who was murdered basically was made into Curry basically, and I do not want to be putting like. Bad taste into like food where a lot of people enjoy, but this was what actually happened. So let's like break it down. So in March nineteen eighty seven, six suspects, including this guy's wife. Nadarata, Romaya, and her relatives were charged with murder, but given a discharge not amounting in an acquittal, as not no remains or evidence of the killing were actually found. So this is one of the case is where like they know that this family murdered. This guy, uh, but there is no, like, evidence basically, so they were let free. So the, on nine January nineteen eighty seven, the this informer like. I don't think informer is really the right word, notified a de- detective. That in nineteen eighty four, a man by the name Ayakano Marimoto had been murdered, and his body has been chopped up into pieces and has been cooked into a curry. Marimoto was a caretaker at the public utility spot Holiday Holiday Chalet in Changdi. So the this detective was initially disgusted and skeptical because you know if someone comes to you and say, "Oh, I know someone that has been murdered and killed into steel," you're not gonna believe it. But brought up the story to his superiors at the criminal investigation department. The senior officers were equally skeptical of the informer story, but instructed the detective to go and conduct inquiries about the case. The detective soon found a missing persons report. On Marimutu Lodge by his wife, Nagarata Valley Ramia, on eighteen December nineteen eighty four, in at the Chuchet Police Station. The only reason why I am not releasing the de- detective's name is due to the respect of him, but I'm sure you can find the detective's name if you look it up. So in the report, Ramia stated that her husband had not returned from a trip from the Genting Islands in Malaysia, having left Singapore on twelve December. Police found no cause of suspicion or foul play, and recorded Marimutu as a missing person. And so months later, Ramia was employed as a caretaker at the Fu Chao. Methodist Church on Race Cross Road. With his information given 
credibility by Marimoto's missing persons report. That over the course of the two months investigation, his the detective actually spoke to about thirty people and gathered background information on a person on number of suspects, one whom was like a mutton butcher. So now we are going to the section of the arrest and the murder trials. And a subsequent, subsequent, subsequent events right from the trial and the arrest. So by nine a.m. of March twenty third, nineteen eighty seven, a total of eight suspects were rounded up. They were Marimoto's widow Romia, his mother-in-law Kamachi, Romia's three brothers, Ratas Krishan, Krishnana, Shanmugan, and Balas Krishna, and their wives. Don't mind the names because I cannot pronounce the names. So, Balas Krishna was a butcher at the mutton stall, while his brother Maya and Chandra were caretakers at the Ministry of Finance holiday chalets on uh, at Orchard Road, and Krishna Sami has a wife, while Mary. Manu, Ramaya's mother-in-law, was a factory worker. Worker. So, all the suspects denied knowing what happened, and until March twenty fifth, nineteen eighty seven, the investigators established that. Uh, all like all this gruesome murder was like emerging, but obviously they don't have a body, and it took place like three years ago, like three years prior to um the the report coming out. So now we are on to the trial. On twenty seven of March, nineteen eighty seven, Romia and her three brothers, Balas Krishna, Romaya, and Shanda Sandra were charged with murder of Marimutu, while her mother, Krishna Sami, and her sister in law, Manuwe, were charged the following day with abetting the murder. The six were. So this is a little bit confusing because there is eight suspects. Now it's back to six suspects, brought and they were brought to court on June six, nineteen eighty seven. During and the hearing only took twelve minutes, and the prosecution prosecution said there was insufficient evidence to proceed against them, as neither the remains of the victim's body, the murder weapon. Nor the cooking pot were ever found. The district judge gave the six a charge, a discharge, not amounting to an acquittal, which meant they could be charged again with the same offence. The deputy public prosecutor added that police investigation would continue with the intention of future charges. While the six of them were taken back to custody by the CID, and so Romia, Krishna Sami, and Manuwe were not arrested, but the three brothers were detained by Changi Prison from 
22nd of June 1987, under the Criminal Law Act, after the number of applications for habeas corpus were denied, a legal challenge to their detention in 1991 was succeeded and they were released unconditionally on the 21st of June 1991. And not much has known whether um, he they were like, arrested again because there is nothing new about like about it as of recently. But yeah, so I really. Would love to hear from you guys about this input about it and see what you guys think about what like actually happened. Maybe he didn't actually die, maybe he ran away or like he did divorce his like wife or maybe he was really murdered. But as of for now but I am really interested in how they became it is known as the curry murder when nobody knows if he was actually murdered or not. So yeah.